Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here. Today we're going to be going over a game for the World Cup of Pokemon between Watashi of Team Canada and Flumita of Team Latin America. Watashi, also known as FLCL, is one of the best players um, nowadays. Had great success in tournaments like SPL where his team emerged victorious and in addition to that has had deep runs in individual tournaments such as Magan Tour. So it's no surprise to see him playing um, high leverage games. Flumita, on the other hand, is a newer Latin American player, um, kind of highlighted for knowing some interesting strategies that he's using in his games. Um, I think he's considered a really dangerous player that could upset some of the more proven players. So this is a pretty cool match I wanted to highlight in the channel for sure. Looking at the team, so he brought up more of a conservative team in this scenario. Um, Magirna, Rillaboom, Toxpex, Mandibuzz, Exadrill, and Dragapult for Flamita that is. It looks like a pretty solid balanced team. Um, on FLCL side, there is an Urshifu, uh, Magirna, Seismitoad. Interestingly enough, seeing that, um, Anyway, there's also a Clefable, Corviknight, and Dragapult. It's interesting to see Corviknight, um, but it is a, probably a pretty good time to bring it here as it's coming up against a Rillaboom and a um, and an Exadrill, so it's able to wall both of those things in all likelihood. Um, what I'm noticing in this matchup is that the Magirna sets could probably dictate a lot of how things play. If they're both specs, then I think you can be able to make steady flows of progress, but they're going to be a little prediction line. The Dragapult sets could also come into play, especially for Flumita, as... Right now, the main answer to it on FLCL's team is Clefable. Unless it's the Assault Vest plus Assault Vest, Magirna plus Physically Defensive Clefable Core, which I came up with the other day that Rob Jr. used in his World Cup game successfully. Um, either way, it looks like Watashi also has some nice offensive presences in his team. As we mentioned already, Magirna and Urshifu. Uh, that core can be pretty potent. It's hard to keep them both in um, kind of checked, so it's interesting. Anyway, we're going to see both of them lead off with Magirna. Um... Hmm. I can't imagine that we're going to see... Um... Okay, he's going to go drill here on the Flash Cannon. That does a nice 31%, so it looks like he's probably some special defense EVs on drill, but it's probably Specs Magirna, yeah. So it's a smart play. Now we're going to see Corbinite come in here, and it can really just stop the Stealth Rock, so you just go for a defog here, but that is going to invite something like the Toxic or the Dragon Ball to try and take advantage of the Corbinite being present. Unfortunately for Flamita, though, the Toxpex is just going to bait in the Clefable at this early point in the game, or Sazbito. It can't really, you know, do much status to damage, etc. But um, looking a bit deeper into things, the presence of the Dragapult on the um, Flamita team could potentially take advantage of this nicely, because even if it goes for Wisp in the Clef, Hex is going to do a lot of damage later. And the main Ghost Resist is an Urshifu. And Urshifu obviously doesn't handle Draco Meteor very well. It's pretty frail and special into fact. So that's definitely helpful. But I think the play here from FLCL is undoubtedly just a defog. And Flamita, you got to pick the Pokemon that you believe can take advantage of this more. Personally, I think that's almost always a new Dragapult, even if you don't have Wisp. Even if you're like a physical variant that's walled by Corviknight for some unknown reason, which would make this matchup very dire for Flamita, then you're still probably forcing it out at this early point in the game and trying to bait something in and then getting in a sequence where you get your Megirin in for free. And doing that means that if you pick the right move, you're going to do a lot of pro make a lot of progress, and that's just really important. Um, thinking a bit deeper, though, Flamita is taking his time here. I'm wondering if he's considering staying in and just kind of going for like a surge dance think it's not body press. I hope he doesn't because I think that's a really sloppy play. He likes to go to the Dragon Ball ultimately on the defog indeed, so that makes a lot of sense. And now this Corviknight is almost definitely going to switch out to the Fable. So... Is it going to be Specs and Shadow Ball? Is it going to try and Wisp to get some status on? Is it going to U-turn in the Fable trying to get the Magirna or, or extra? And he goes for the U-turn option, does 9% to the Clef. That makes a lot of sense. He now can go to the Magirna or Drill or Rillaboom, I suppose, to take advantage of this. Of course, he has to be careful, though. And he goes Magirna. That makes sense. And we are not sure what set it is, but my initial inclination is that it is of the choice Specs variety, as that is the best set. But again, we'll find out momentarily. Protect here from Clef is interesting on a Flare Cannon. Okay, so I don't know if that Flare Cannon could take out a Special Defensive Clefable in one hit. In fact, I'm fairly, I'm fairly certain that it doesn't, but regardless of that fact, after wasting 1 PP, he then goes Corviknight, which takes 53%, a lot of damage, but can roost it off, and that's another 2 PP down the drain. So all of a sudden, if that sequence happens again, then we're going to be very low in PP on Flare Cannon. So that being Protect Clefable is very helpful. We're going to see a Thunder Wave here from Dragapult, which is a really helpful tool to try and emerge victorious in this game. Um, we're going to see a U-turn there. And a teleport. Okay. Makes sense. And now we see the size method come in on this point. Um, it goes for a knockoff. Okay, it's probably going to eat a Toxic fight, the guess. It might be an offensive size method given that knockoff damage. We'll have to keep in mind how much Earthquake does to something like this Tax if it stays in. 
Well, he goes Rillaboom, so it's kind of a moot point. But if I can be on rocks anyway, yeah, it was indeed on rocks. So this Rillaboom looks pretty good here. Although I imagine it goes for a knockoff trying to hit the Corviknight. So if I'm not, I... Yeah, knockoff it is. Just 31%. See, so it's probably more physical defensive Corviknight if I had the gas against a banded variant of the Rillaboom. Either way, the McGinnis comes in now on a U-turn. That's a smart play. Um, voiced. Um, I'm not really going to give him voice in the middle of the game. Um, anyway... Looking at the situation, we do see Magirna on Magirna action. It's interesting. Um, I think that FL cells might be like max speed or a little quicker, so we'll have to wait and see how that works out. And yeah, he's going to switch out, but is this going to be a Volt Switch predicting switch? It is indeed. Um, just 64%, and that invites in near Shifu, which now, if he goes for close combat into the Mandibuzz, could be a great position, but if he goes Wicked Blow into stand, you know, actually, close combat might kill regardless, so it really depends on what set this is. We'll have to wait and see. A variant with bulk up and soccer punch also does amazing in this match, by the size. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking that the play here is honestly for Flamita to just go out to um to Mandibuzz, but I'm worried that's going to be close combat. This can be close combat bait, or it's going to go for bulk up, in which case that would be really problematic. So we'll have to wait and see what happens at this juncture. Um, hmm. FL still is taking his time here. So it's going to be interesting to see what he comes up with. Uh, hmm. Well, they're both taking their time now, so this is a bit of a... A crossroads of a turn. That Volt Switch was a really great play by FLCL, forcing Chip on the Tox Fix. I think that FLCL has made a number of plays that are kind of like mid ground oriented, where he's okay incurring a little bit of risk, such as said, McGinnis saying any going for a flash cannon, but yeah, and that's a close combat. But he, he's not really throwing away the game, but if he gets it right, it has a high upside. For example, that close combat. If the Peck stays in, it's just going to cover up and he could just provoke that same sequence again. So yeah. This is really amazing. And then FLCL predicted a drag ball to come in and double to the gear. And now is he going to go for a Flare Cannon or, or a Spear into this? He goes, oh my god, what a play. FLCL has handled this game amazingly, especially these last handful of turns. And that was just really well done. I think you honestly just stay in here and click Aurisphere Ur again. This is plus one spec. Yeah, this is 56 on a um, Flash Cannon. And now, now do you know it's locked in the Flash Cannon and you want to cover the prospect of the Drag Pull just wide to Corviknight, but Sazmatode works just as well. And yes, FLCL has just made some really amazing plays turn after turn after turn here. Mandibuzz now comes in, but it's going to come... Oh, an Earthquake. But wait, is this a fast liquidation variant? Or... I don't know. Hmm. Well, he goes liquidation. Uh, Rillaboom is to play here. It's going to come in... Uh, it's going to bait in the Corviknight and go for U-turn. That's a smart play because it's going to give it some momentum for something like Dragbolt to come in. But I can't see Flamita being able to edge this out after that prior sequence. Some... He does get a Thunder Wave on this, which is helpful, but it's going to roost up. And now, I guess this leaves it susceptible. But again, I, I think there's still too much revenge killing prowess on the um, FLCL team. Especially because with the Megirna now, we can Wicked Blow is super free whenever the Urshifu comes in. So, for instance, let's say um, let's say Corviknight comes in on the Rillaboom and goes for U-Turn as the Megirna or Drag Ball comes in. Well, I guess Drago can get a Thunder Wave or Draco off. And Draco maybe kill, I don't how healthy it's at 100. I don't think Draco kills them for, for sure. Um, hmm. So at this point, yeah, I think you just um you could honestly. Do you just go gear, or do you stay in, or do you go... I don't know. There's honestly a couple of plays. He likes to fodder Seismitoad off, which is fair. And that just dies to a critical hit hex, which it didn't really matter. But now, is a follow-up play going to be going to Megirna because you live a hex at 39? I guess that could work. Um, you go Megirna and click a Volt Switch? That'd be kind of ballsy. But yeah, no, I guess there's a chance here for Flamita. If this is a quicker variant of the Dragapult than the opposing Dragapult, um, well, he goes Clef instead. I don't know if Clef actually kills with Moonblast. Hex could to a KO. Um, but no, we don't see that. We see a, a U-turn into Fable, and that hits Moonblast into Magirna, but now Magirna can potentially do a lot of damage here with his Specs Flash Cannon, and Corviknight comes in predicting that, but is he going to go for Volt Switch? No, he just goes for Flash Cannon, does 31% damage. That is unfortunate. 
for Watashi. Another flash cannon. Uh, unfortunate for Flamita. Get a drop. Wait. Wait a minute. Get a drop. Okay. Not all hope is lost. Um, I, I think we just see a U-turn here, honestly. That lets the Urshifu in to get a kill. So, yeah. I think there's a chance for Flamita to win if the Dragapult gets a little fortunate in the coming turns. Honestly, it's probably going to need a full process or two, for example, maybe some timely double switches, but all hope is definitely not lost at this point. So, yeah, we'll see. I think that FLC letting us take the process wasn't great, but you didn't want to risk the will uh, the, the hex connecting on the um, clef. Another drop here on a... Oh my god. It is happening. The Corviknight has effectively been neutralized by a flash cannon. For those of you keeping score at home, that is two straight special defense drops with one full paralysis. So that's a really fortunate sequence for Flamita, but I still think that FLCL Watashi has a pretty sizable advantage at this point. We'll have to wait and see. I know they're still resist, so. The thing is that every time the Magirna gets a kill, the Urshifu gets a kill, and the Urshifu is quicker than Magirna and kills with any move besides, like, Poison Jab. So, yeah. Watashi's taking his time here just to make sure that he knows the best play. He's going to go Magirna as the fodder. Okay. I think that's fair so long as you go Urshifu as follow-up instead of Dragapult, and he does just that. And this is in Wicked Blow range, so I think you just go for Wicked Blow here, as that all sorts of talk specs for neutral and a drag pulp for super effective damage, as opposed to close combat being resisted and not effective at all due to the immunity. So, what's also cool is it doesn't incur the defense drop, which would make it really hard for Rillaboom. And the reason why I preserved the Corviknight is specifically for Rillaboom, as two Wicked Blows to the face are going to eliminate that talk specs, but now that Dragon Pulse come out here, and it's going to be very dangerous for sure. Do you stay in here on a Draco and live that? Yes, he does. And he goes for the Wicked Blow and he takes it out. So that's going to be great. FLCL now is a 4-2 lead in this game. And the Real Boom comes out here now to try and do something with Grassy Glide. But Corviknight, I assume, could come in as well as the uh, the Dragapult or the Clef. Anything could really switch in. And he goes Clef, yeah, on a Grassy Glide. That does 67 percent. I think you're FLCL, so you're just staying because you can't really do much with this anyway. Yeah. And now he can go to Corviknight and hopefully get a Roost up. Or he goes Dragapult. Okay. Dragapult has to be careful, though. Uh, Mist Willowbus or Draco could go a long way and cost him the game here. Um, I don't think this is over, but Flamita's so going to need some significant RNG to be able to emerge victorious in this, from this position, I'd say. Yeah. Um, I think you just go for Wisp if you have to see all your specs, and you just... Um, do you have a fire move if your specs? Oh, it doesn't even took you. Yeah, okay. He's thunder. Wait, he's thunder wave. So, hmm. I guess you just hex. Yeah. Leaves it at uh five percent or so with grass before grass train eleven percent afterwards, and now you just go to Corvinat, I guess, because you have two Pokemon faster. So, train's gonna run out. Yeah, there's no way you lose at this point. He gets powered anyway, so that does the trick. But yeah, it was over anyway. Barring sizable luck in the favor of Flamita. So that's going to be a good game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. It was definitely a close one between Watashi, FLCL of Canada, and Flamita of Latin America. Let me know what you think of the teams and the players in the comments below. And have a great day, guys. Peace out.